Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else, we come up with the latest version of Proton sounds amazing. And I promise that's going to make sense later, kids. And we're going to be talking about Epic Steam Competitor and the fact that it's live, but most importantly, why it's bad news for us, Linux gamers. Bearded Giant introduces the Linux First Initiative laughs in Epic, and Valve continues to fuck with us. You know, as they do. There's another sale in Bound, one which I will most certainly not care about missing. An artifact is still a thing, and some people still play it. I guess. I'm surprised you're not addicted to that game. <laughs> Dude, I had, a, I, I had a weird ass, I had a weird ass dream the other night where I like went into a shop and bought like a thousand dollars worth of magic cards. I've had a similar dream with cigarettes. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if you're new here, I'm Vince Stone. That it was Jordan Sveg and the non-addicted, non-artifact playing monster to our far right. And that is one picture of Matthias. Nick and with you at home. Live. Look, it even says pre showsing You're hanging out. Help us form that last little bit. We known. We known. Is that is that cromulent? We known as... It's, 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 it's a perfectly monster. cromulent word. It is. It's a thing. It's kind of brilliant. Before we get started, we do like to uh, see what's going on in each other's life organs. I just, uh, so I experienced the goddamn Batman in Arkham Origins. Runs swimmingly with Proton, but I got a gang of Batman giggity in a bundle when they were on sale. So I have like three of them. I have all of them except for the one that Feral cock teased us with. And so I, I'm back playing, uh, what was it? Arkham City. This game doesn't end. It doesn't. Like, I, I've, in the past week, I put 11 hours into it, and I'm like, yes, I'm done. The game's like, fuck you, no, you're not. Now you're playing as Robin. I'm like, God, I don't have time, <laughs> game. I think this might be the first game I've ever tapped out, not because I'm disinterested. It's like, I don't have time for this. <laughs> Jordan, what's up with you, baby? I mean, I, I, I've mentioned in the pre-pre super shows, and I uh, went to a... A diehard Christmas party where we commented on the fact that Ven Stone has an ass like a diehard two villain. Um, <laughs> but when you originally said that, I was like, wait a minute. Because when, when somebody says diehard, I'm like, what was it? It was like a metal ass party? Like, or was it a diehard? Well, uh, t I, I mean, technically, like four of the people there were in a metal band. So that does count. And Bruce Willis is screaming, <laughs> no, Gruber. <laughs> it's not Christmas, well, yet. <laughs> yet. Hey, man, uh, what's Christmas up to in Britannia? Right, so uh, I have no idea because in about uh, eight hours, I'm going to be on a plane to Portugal. No. Don't so you know when you'll can... be back again? <laughs> oh, I'll be back in about uh, two weeks-ish. A little under two weeks. I'm coming back on the Friday the 28th, I think. Well, what if they don't and let you in Portugal? What if they turn you away at the airport? Yeah. They're like, no. I will be very happy. <laughs> I really don't want to go. Okay. Oh, no, no, wait, wait. Hang on, hang on. Hang on. All right, all right. Hard, hard mode. They let Nori in. That would be kind of a dick move, but I still don't want to get <laughs> I, I was, I was going to say they deport your ass to Spain. Ooh. For just three ucks. <laughs> you know, uh, something we should deport to Spain, but we're not because we kind of love it. The dead, rotting corpse of the horse. I don't think the Spanish Customs and Border Patrol Agency would allow us to ship a dead horse. I know in Canada it's legal to drag it down Young Street on a Wednesday. It's the Steam! <laughs> is coming and it's uh apparently according to the seam database on twitter it's uh going to start next week on the 20th coincidentally that's uh the day i'm supposedly going down to see my parents so yeah <laughs> i'm totally going to miss this one because or i might catch the tail end of that but i really have nothing on my wish list that i must have hey man apparently it's like on, uh... farting out mystery cards already they already do they've been doing that for a while it's uh the just a couple like a week or so before the um the sale proper is supposed to start they start dropping mystery 
mystery cards and then when the sale starts it gets revealed that the card is oh it's this card for this badge and yeah i guess that's the whole point of sales now just so people can get more cards and more badges okay as uh, someone <laughs> currently a member of the eu um ha- have you like ran into any weirdness like if you buy something in, like in the uk can you play it in portugal and vice versa yes yes Hmm. All of my library is uh, the ones that were bought in Portugal are playable over here. So I guess I'll have a chance to try when I go there and I'll see, ooh, can I play this? Can I play but, this? But, <laughs> but wouldn't it be funny if like, the stuff you bought in the UK, you can't play in Portugal anymore? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm going to have to try. <laughs> I think the let's, only like, dude, like the weirdest one was, hey, Pedro, here's a copy of Mighty Number no. 9. Yes, which is region locked to the U.S. Apparently, <laughs> Di- digital v- digital goods man, digital goods had to VPN Bad. in to make that happen. Yep, and I was like, what the actual hell? Uh, it it really does seem like we just had a sale though, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, well, we did. We, yeah, we we had the uh, the fall sale, I guess. Yeah, mm-hmm. like yeah, a month ago. That, yeah, I think that's where I bought the goddamn Batman's. Hmm. Yeah, I'm 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 hope I'm hoping that uh the Metal Gear Solids go on sale. I wanna pick up Phantom Pain again because I bought it on PlayStation 4 and I gotta buy my See this this is why I really like Steam, is because like I can buy the game once and play it on whatever computer I want. I don't have to yeah. go <laughs> wait for the RPCS3 guys to invent RPCS4. <laughs> <laughs> Time will tell. So we got some epic news, and it's not necessarily that good because it's like some epic store games are pushing back or scrapping their steam release that's right but basically that's code for epics giving developers money to get exclusives mm-hmm. on the now launched epic store and initially i was like well man you know it's going to be a timed exclusive or it's just going to be straight up exclusive uh but that's really not going to but wait these are from publishers and developers that have linux fuck you pc gamer <laughs> oh, it, 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 it was really bad too. So I'm, I'm a big fan of Super Giant games. I, I was a big fan of Transistor. I, Pyre was a little too weird for me. I, I liked uh, I like Bastion though. Uh, yeah. But they have their new they have their new game out, Hades, and they they exclusively develop using FNA. Thanks to Ethan for all that good stuff. But because it's on the Epic Store, I don't get to play it because number one, I gotta buy a Windows copy of a game that they're not gonna give me a, a Linux version of forever because. I, I, we're, 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 we're gonna talk we're gonna talk about that um the, the the whole the whole lack of you know open solutions on the epic store but quote, jordan unquote. no quit quit hating on epic they released uh <laughs> earlier this week they said other os's will be supported and a- a- like, android is totally linux you guys right straight other up open straight platforms straight up <laughs> named every uh, i'm surprised they didn't have, and uh, you know xenix uh but man no they did not drop the l word in that announcement they're like well, oh, we're not saying the l word they're, they're, it, 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 it's funny too because they're like going out of their way to not mention Linux, which we yeah. which we've gone out of our way to bring up before. A lot. Yeah, that 2019 roadmap, <laughs> Control F, not you don't need anything. But hey, Discord's not having this business, man. Uh, yesterday, I believe it was, uh, or day before, Discord's like, oh yeah, well you you because you know Epic's big push is we're gonna take less of a cut than Valve. And Discord's like, uh-uh, we're going to do it best. We're going to give a 90-10 split. And that was news. It's like, so come do the Discord thing. And to Discord's credit, uh, I think it was yesterday, in one of the Reddit comments, one of the uh, Discord developers, like, I went and checked the dude's post history. Yeah, dude's actually from Discord. He's like, yeah, we're 100% going to do Linux, but we got to make sure it works first. Mm. That's but, fair. But, but, but... <laughs> I mean, and you know, maybe maybe just because Proton's open source, they're just going to start cribbing Proton and like, oh yeah, we we support Linux gaming too. Well, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's yeah. a thing that could happen. And yeah, a lot of this seems to be people don't want Valve to take their thirty percent; they want more of the cut, and that's all very well and good. But uh, as far as you know, as far as competition is concerned, yes, uh, Valve and Steam need some competition, but that competition needs to happen on Linux for me to give a damn. And well, and that, it, that's, it's that's, just not. That's the thing. We we are we are a captive market, right? Like we right. There, there are there there are a couple vendors who support us, but mm-hmm. every time one of these new exciting stores happens, 
they're 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 not they're not stealing business from the Linux market. They 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 don't want any of that. They just want that lucrative Fortnite money. Yeah, <laughs> we get to see how this shakes out, man. Uh, it, it's epic. I want to believe poster with epic, but they've not done anything outside of like, well, we've made the source available for Unreal Engine Four, and they have included. We'll talk about that later. They are releasing some Linux specific updates. For, mm, we'll see. Whatever. Mm, mm. All right. So, how, how how many lights are there? So, um, the the new the new Counter Strike Battle Royale Danger Zone thing came out a couple weeks ago, and lo and behold, people have been paying attention to what's been going on in the background. And in one of the maps, uh, it is um, it's the Black Site map. Well, yeah, the, uh, uh, D, D, DZ Black Site. Um, there 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 is there's we, you've seen you've seen the meme. There's like the hotel room with one two and three and the three is on the ground for like the room numbers and if you go into room number two you can actually get into room number three where there's a bunch of computers and there's the, they're they're beeping stuff and it's it's a code uh someone someone you know because there are nerds on the internet who will crack every code ever <laughs> um they they they, just, they determined that uh, the message was this was a triumph i'm making a note here huge success and all of a sudden it was like zomb portal three oh my god it's happening ah! Of course, of course, of course, Valve steps in and is like, no, man, this, this was just an Easter egg. It's a joke. And in a way, I kind of feel a, a little bad, a li just, just a hair, a hair of sympathy, because you can't put Easter eggs and stuff anymore without people losing their goddamn mind. <laughs> um, man, I wish I could dry my tears in their pile of money, though. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's better to quit while you're ahead, right? And it's not like, uh, you know, Artifact blew anyone's mind, but more on that later. So Valve is just saying... Yeah, no, it's, it's, this is a thing we did. It was very popular. Uh, so we're mentioning it. We're just mentioning it. Calm your tits! I don't know. <laughs> hey, the, the, the whole idea of there being other viable options for game stores goes away with, yeah, Half-Life 3. Here it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Steam, like, Steam exclusive, only available on Macintosh. Oh, <laughs> but no, uh, 100% when I see stuff like this, I, I doesn't even register. I'm like, yeah, whatever. I mean, we, we probably all have like the red herring card from two years ago. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, this is a thing. And Val's like, psych. And I'm like, oh, you know, quit being bored and doing stupid shit like this. Anyway, <laughs> anyway. Proton, we got a new update. And along with this new update, uh, 316 beta dash five, we got 28 new games added and, you know, just going through the notes, kind of looking at it, we got some audio stuff and it does seem like they're starting to get some of that .NET stuff sorted out, which I'm like, all right, that'd be fun because I yep. actually ran into this issue with the goddamn Batman because it would not install with, uh, cause I think it defaults to windows. 10? 7, I think. Or 7? Seven? 7, yeah. That's the wide default. It couldn't get .NET installed with the game, so I had to change the prefix to Windows XP, install .NET, then change it back to Windows 10. Mm. Then then it works. So, yeah, they, they need to get that sorted out. But audio stuff, man. What's up with that? Flibbit's been to work. Yeah, oh, yeah. As, 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 as you know, Flibbit was consumed by the Proton Project. They're paying his bills now. Um, and yeah, uh, he... he I mean, we, he was working on an F-Audio uh, replication to integrate better integrate into FNA, but uh, they decided to actually integrate that into Proton proper. So those changes have now been upstreamed. So your Fallouts and other games that are using F-Audio should have better sound, or at least like better like 5.1, 7.1, uh, rather than just plain old stereo, if that is your jam. They also have another little note in here that kind of made my skin crawl, where they're just like, uh, better support for embedded Chromium-based web browsers. Games and launchers that contain embedded uh, web browser may, may work better. Electron through wine, man. That's That just makes me itch. <laughs> to be fair, the whole of the Steam client is a Chromium embedded framework thing. So it's a basically already Electron. <laughs> you got to give Steam right. credit, though. They actually managed to make Chromium run like ass. Yes. Yes, they did. <laughs> I mean, that, that takes some work. <laughs> and uh, with the uh, 3.16.5 beta, I just like, oh, okay, it's a new beta, so I'll go try Fallout 4 and see if the audio weirdness still happens. And I noticed that it had become very freezy. But uh, today, earlier today, it's like, wait a second. 
There was an issue similar to this when the 3.7-4 or 5 came out. And basically all you had to do was delete the Proton folders and let Steam re-download them. So I did that and no more freezing on Fallout 4. So kudos. Uh, so, so Ben, what were, what were the 28 new games? Um, if you go to linuxgamecast.com forward slash steam dash whitelist. <laughs> yes. You too. Uh, Castlevania Lords of Darkness was uh, the like the major one that I saw. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> to, to answer your question more directly, really nothing we'd give a fuck about. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. That, 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 that was more it. Is there anything, anything spicy? No. Uh, artifact. Let's keep talking much, about that for reasons. How much yes. does it cost? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it costs apparently, uh, going by the, uh, the numbers, doing a bit of a refresh because it keeps changing. So, yep. uh, going by the numbers, it currently costs $191.69, giggity, uh, for on average to get one of every era uh, one of every hero and three of every other card so basically it's artifact so you need to have one hero per lane so you can spawn or you can cast spells of that color and if you want to have all the heroes and three which is the max that you can have per deck per card you need to pay in and around 200 bucks and, I mean, that, you know, that, that's not bad. So, yeah. I, 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 so I, I, I frequent, I frequent a game <laughs> store, and not last week, I saw someone drop like three hundred dollars on magic cards. So, <laughs> and and like that, they, they, they bought, they bought like a box of booster packs. So that's just like the the chance of getting some competitive cards. So mm -hmm. like when when I, when I see like this is under two hundred dollars, I'm like, you know what? That's not that's not too bad. That that that's it's, by trading card game standards, that's actually affordable. Yeah, it's not bad at all by that standard. But we need to remember that this is a video game, and if you're okay with spending twenty uh, or two hundred and twenty bucks on a video game, which I'm not, you can get all the cards. So. Yeah, I mean, it's a brand new game. No one really knows the meta. There isn't a meta, so to speak. So, yeah, you may have a chance if you want to spend 220 bucks on it. I, I, I mean, the, 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 the point of contention here would be, like, how much does, like, a full set of Hearthstone cost? That would... That, uh, that would... The people ran the math a while back. Whenever a new expansion comes out, you, need, you would need to spend around $60 in booster packs in Hearthstone to get all the cards. But like so, for, 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 for all the rares and like three, like, like a, a, enough to stuff your deck full of stuff. Yes, you would get all the new cards for around $60. All right, let's duck the right. holes and continue <laughs> talking about something I give negative fucks about. Uh, Cold yes. Arms 1.1. Yeah, it's the new update for um, for Artifact, and it comes with uh, Death from Above, which is a whole new deck. Uh, well, so it's a, a deck, deck skeleton. Yeah, it's a blue deck skeleton, so you can basically work. If you have the cards, you can build that deck. You have the Dark uh, Aggro, which is... Again, another different deck with a focus it, it, on more it, aggressive it, 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 creatures. It, it's a black deck. If, if you've played Magic the Gathering, you understand what this means. If you don't, yes. then <laughs> go, go give Richard Garfield more of your money. And of course, they also have random mode now, which is uh, if you play with a Call to Arms uh, decks, uh, they you have a new mode that you can play. And there's leaderboards because, yeah, yeah, you needed that, I guess. Uh, yeah, they're, they're, also... they're, they're, they're... There, there's there's also a, like a couple of short tournament modes for like impromptu mm -hmm. stuff because because they they host like regular hosted tournaments but if you just want to get some people together or if you just want to play against some people uh, they have a thing for setting up mini tournaments that last about four rounds or so um, and the the other the other thing that I thought was kind of interesting maybe speaks to Valve sort of future proofing their game quote unquote is there's an improved forever load mode where <laughs> um, you can go play against bots that have like increasingly powerful and versatile decks. Um, yeah, if you, if you if you don't like people, or if you or if in five years you decide, hey, I want to play some artifact, and no one else is ever. I was looking at this <laughs> earlier this week because, hey, it's a story, and I need to be informed, even about something that, okay, whatever, it's a card game for nerds. Um, I remember mentioning what was it last week or week before? Is that this is competing against Hearthstone, which is priced to sell it free? 
Mm-hmm. And Artifact launched. Everyone, you know, had their regasms because, hey, new game from Valve. We got to try it. They gave them 20 bucks. And it, it was pretty strong, man. I mean, it was like 60,000 uh, concurrent players. Mm-hmm. It was rocking. Mm-hmm. I went and checked that a couple of days ago. It's down to about eight or nine thousand. Yeah. <laughs> Right. And to be fair, it, it's a niche market to start with. Uh, and be, tying a card game to Dota in particular doesn't really help. Uh, that and most people who stop playing, like those uh, of those 60,000, those, uh, I don't know, 51,000 that went away, they just wanted to see. It's like, oh, it's a new Valve game. Let's, let's see what that's about. And now they're off to do another new thing mm-hmm. that came out. Right on, right <laughs> yeah. on. Yeah. Let's go uh, into yeah. speed. Speedrunners, yeah, they have a they have a holiday update for Electric Light or- Orchestra. Well, I don't I don't know what ELO stands for, but uh, they they have a new uh, they have a new season where you can uh, join some tournaments. Um, if you listen, if you if you ever want to realize how bad you are at this game, go go join the Christmas <laughs> tournament. Um, if I mean if if you win, you can get a jingle tinsel trail for your your runner, and you can get entry into another tournament with people who are even better than the people you beat. So. <laughs> You know, got, listen, I love the game. I think we all universally enjoy this game. And yes, it, mm-hmm. I got to give them some shit. They have YouTuber pack one and YouTuber pack two for DLC. I don't know what the fuck that is. <laughs> listen, listen, <laughs> li- listen, listen, man, don't, don't, what? Oh, Markiplier that's even worse. Jesse it's Cox. I, okay. And... Wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. I thought it was like content to enhance your YouTube streams. Fuck me. No. Okay. It's actual <laughs> YouTubers. Yep. It's yes. even worse. <laughs> Right. All right. Um, but 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 I mean that that's the thing. If you're into competitive speedrunning, which is a thing, you can this this might be something you want to check out. It's mm-hmm. available. It's fun, it's fun game. Otherwise, you should still check it out. Anyways. Yeah. You want to talk about games that have a dedicated fan base? There's like two or three hundred concurrent people uh, on this game at any point. But and that's the only so game that they play. You. Yeah. Oh, they, <laughs> I thought I was getting like ass. hot shit like the week we reviewed the game where I was really putting some time into it. Then I ran into a rando online. Like I, I was going through the levels. I was not fucking up and hitting things. And this dude was having to just straight up wait on my decrepit ass. <laughs> he, he, he felt so bad for me. He would stop and win. I was like, that's more insulting than you just beating me. Dude. Come on. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> just, just take the win, man. Um, that game was surprisingly good. This one surprisingly disappointed but they're still at it distance Mm -hmm. 1.1 the nexus update uh hey this is supposed to be like a big thing for them and i'm like okay maybe they have a new mini cam bag and it's out uh you get some new stuff so you're gonna get basically six new tracks and reindeer car decorations man this is totally going to flip your opinion (laughs) on distance the game that was in early access longer than early access existed. Mm-hmm. It's about it's about <laughs> as old as this show. So yes, <laughs> uh, pretty much the tracks look neat. Uh, I'm going to be 100 percent honest. Uh, I have no interest in the campaign because that wasn't the campaign. That was like some fucked up art piece w- with a car. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That wasn't yeah. very good. <laughs> and they took the levels that you had been playing over the you know. However many years it was in beta or early access or alpha or whatever you want to call it. And they changed it around and everything was different. It's like, what are you doing? (laughs) Thwarting my times? (laughs) Well, are you? Uh, But no, it's, yeah, no, it's the Christmas thing. They they do this every year. They they put some antlers and a little red glowing nose on your car. It's like, hey, look, it's distance. Neat. (laughs) <laughs> Rudolph the Red Nose Carcour. I don't know. Yes, uh, I'm. I, I might try it out, but yeah, that that this is one of the problems with something being in development that long, and it goes for any game because expectations build up almost to a point to where you really couldn't deliver. Period. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's unfortunate. Okay, uh, so let's get into some new games. Yes, uh, Battle Royale Tycoon from Endless Loop Studios. This is their third uh, Tycoon game. Um, and it was just a matter of time before all the lampoons started coming in. Cause I, every, I like every, Everyone's on the Battle Royale. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, that's my favorite themed park. There's, b- 
booze and gunland. Um, but yeah, you, you, the, the whole point of this game is like you set up battle royale maps and then little AIs go and murder each other and you collect your money and you can set up drop points and shooting ranges and stuff. And the, the, I, I, the, this talk talk about narrow appeal. Like the, the, this is this is a, number one a joke game. Number two, if you're if you're really into tycoon games, you might be able to find something redeemable about this. For all I know, this could actually be a very competently done tycoon game. Mm-hmm. I I just don't care. But here the real question is: Can you do a better job of creating battle royale maps than Valve? Mm. <laughs> yeah, no, they released one recently, so that uh, that cake's still hot. <laughs> I don't know. This is definitely falls in that category of is this ridiculous enough to be good? Yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's still in early access, so they could add more things like distance cars and reindeers and reindeers it's with guns. Theme park. It's just that the theme happens to be something that's very popular right now. Murder. The <laughs> theme is murder. Simulator. Simulator. Uh, this up coming up next is Godly Corp which I opened and I immediately closed, not because it bothered me. It's like, I, if I'm going to play this, I need to record it. And I was too busy to sit down and do that because uh, you bas- basically play as Cthulhu. And yeah, it, it's a God simulator where you're a bad, fucked up, pissy God. I, I just want to know where the spaghetti DLC is. My my religion is not being represented here. A new challenge every day. I have no idea. This this game could absolutely eat shit, but I was like, okay, mm, I, I'm going to have to give it a chance, though. <laughs> I mean, it, it has a tentacle with a handgun. I'm sold. <laughs> it is yeah, a- it's basically a surgeon simulator, but they tried to do more than, you know, just the surgery bit <laughs> yeah if if, if 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 octodad and surgeon simulator had a baby it would be this game hey man yes. how can you go wrong with a tentacle and a handgun I mean. uh, you, you you can't you you, you just can't 100 this it's, this is the god i want to worship the god of tentacles and handguns hey reasonably mm-hmm. priced 679 and i want to thank the developers for sending over a copy this is one of the rare yes. times that <laughs> i checked our like the page thing the we have curator connect thing yeah that mm-hmm. yeah clicked yeah. on it i was like oh, okay we're, we're gonna have to check that out so it's got a <laughs> couple of rough edges but yeah so <laughs> once it gets up and launching uh yeah uh, i think uh look forward to us playing that indeed <laughs> all right Coming up next, oh my god, you can get some new games on GOG and not have to pay for them and not pirate them either. Also, also we talk about the Linux First Initiative and why that is the best thing and will save us all. Welcome back to the Danger Zone. Well, it, it's actually not. It's actually just a little teeny tiny podcast, what we do on Saturdays. And there's a lot of you that decided, you know what? We, I like what those guys do, so uh, I'm going to give them the necessary funds I don't know, man. Now, I, now, now I got Secret Agent Man <laughs> stuck in my head. Thanks, Pedro. <laughs> the life of danger. Everyone he meets, he stays, stays a stranger. Well, you can you can be a stranger, too. And I want to go stab a flower through, child. Uh, <laughs> through, uh, through, through Bitcoin, but you know, you, 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 there's, there's a number of ways. stab a flower child with Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> make a listen, wish listen, foundation l- l- listen me. i then i believe in you you will find a way to stab someone with bitcoin thank you all right thank you. All, right, all right well you, you, if, if you if you want to fund this important research that will say will not save lives it will cost lives you can head on over to linksgamecast.com click the support uh button there's a ton of stuff here you can click through i you, you can read i believe in you but there's affiliate links you should click on those and buy stuff through them. That way we get a little bit of money and you get the thing that you were going to buy anyways. Yeah, you can also head over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast, where you can fund us over there. You can give us some money every week, every time we put out a show, and you can get some cool stuff like access to the show notes, access to the Discord channel. When we decide to play Counter-Strike or Rocket League, you can show up and be like, hey, man, I want to play with you. And we'll be like, OK, well, you're paying us, so, you know. Get, get do, do we have a tier for stabbing people <laughs> with the bitcoins? Because we, well, we, we need one now. L- 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 listen, but yeah, the, the only thing though is we only accept uh, we only accept donations in Bitcoin for that because we need something to stab with. Um, we, we we only we only have a fraction of a Bitcoin. We need the full Bitcoin for like maximum stabitude. Um, but of course, hey, we 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 got a store now too. You can go to uh, what's 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 that URL? I still. 
Man, I, 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 teespring.com I'm, 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 forward slash teesp- store forward slash Linux Gamecast. <laughs> Linux Gamecast.com <laughs> forward slash store. Yeah, that also easier. works. That you also can also works. Go, you, you can also Google search Linux Gamecast store and your your mileage may vary there. Our but dark we, we, web we got, address for a tour. Yeah, um, yeah no. Hey, if you become um, a new patron or uh, do that thing, increase your pledge or whatever, tell us to go fuck ourselves. We're gonna we're gonna be like, hey, we want to give you a special thanks, give you a shout out. We're gonna put you in the credits, deal with it. But we want to think. Uh, I'm gonna go. All right, this is always the fun part. Nib- it's, nibbles. It's, it's, it's it's nibbles. it's four bites. Yeah, it's four bites. It's a nibble. <laughs> it's a nibble bite. Or four 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 bits. It's a nibble. It's not a bite. A nibble. Um, I can't yeah, we <laughs> well, can you though? Take take off your shirt and show us. On, One on of the side. crazy things you could also no. do, man, if you want to help us uh, <laughs> take our crazy little studio, our mad experiment. We're we're three uh, people, insane people, with uh, the ability to broadcast to your face organs. But if you pick up anything. From our Amazon wish list, uh, you end up on Frank's fuck wall. It's yeah. kind of terrifying. It's a horrible idea because I mean, I think we need, no, we need a new look, fuck look, wall. I'm, I'm going to tell you why it's a horrible idea, Jordan. Do you know why? No, because that fuck wall has not stabbed anybody with bitcoins yet, and it's bothering me. Can you stab the fuck wall with bitcoin? <laughs> Challenge accepted. <laughs> um, <laughs> Next week, the fuck wall is just pelted with like. All right, 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 right. trying to give this, a, get this, a this shout out. Getting any right, come on. All right. So, uh, <laughs> hey, you know him. You love him. He's in uh, chat room right now. Michael, you know him. Oh, it's so awesome. Uh, except when he picks us up something with terms and conditions attached to it. Because mm. one of the things we were thinking about picking up is. Uh, I get what, what were they called? Camcorders? Yeah. And handicams, camcorders. Yes. Yeah. Handicams. And check it out, man. That shit showed up. Look at oh, that. Oh, I'm getting get all pro. No, uh, it's going to actually put me to work because there's a gang of shit. I've been sitting there like, man, I want to do a thing on this, on this. That doesn't involve like getting the USB 3 extension cables and running them out to and like setting shit up. Boom. That's the thing. Plus, we can get out and about. Michael writes, Mike G, you know him, you love him. I hope the camcorder will capture some great footage in your future plans. Happy holidays. Hail Santa. Hail Santa to you too, Mike. Hail How, Santa. However. <laughs> however. I have two cards. Oh. <laughs> the second one says, hopefully the Santa hat will fit Vin or Frank. <laughs> You mother. <laughs> I mean, Ben's got a skinny head, so he'll fit most hats. He's got a massive head. And if it was anybody else, Mike, I would have just recorded footage of me lighting this thing on fire. But <laughs> since it's you, let's see if it fits my fucking head. <laughs> oh, 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 we're doing it. We're doing it oh, live. Oh, 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 <laughs> over the headphones. Over the headphones. That's hard mode. I don't know if we want to. I don't, know, I don't think this thing will fit my head, but what, there's no way it's getting over that, folks. All right. <laughs> all right. Drum roll, please. It fits. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Ben is now a ho. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mazel tov. I feel violated. Neskadol. <laughs> Next year in Jerusalem. <laughs> Bad touch. Oh, <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Let's 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 get in some news. We're feeling extra festive. Ven, there's some new games on God Connect. <laughs> I can't think. My blood supply, brain, oxygen, something. No, um, we, we do just full of Christmas cheer. Yeah, uh, we got a couple of new games. If you know about God Connect, you can hook this business up, and it will sync with what you have in your Steam library. And if it has uh, copies that you can actually own instead of just having a license to. They'll let you download them. And there's a bunch of Linux goodness on there. Uh, what did I end up getting? Uh, Abe's Odyssey and Shadowrun Dragonfall along with Trine on this round. Uh, I was yeah. kind of pleased with that. Yeah, I, I just got the the uh, Shadowrun Dragonfall Director's Cut, Hong Kong Extended Edition, Returns, and Trine. So now I have DRM free copies of all the Shadowrun games. They're actually really fun RPGs. So if you own them yeah. and play them they're fun um yeah uh, the, the other ones here were um age of wonders and i have no mouth and i'm a scream is available on linux so if you're a big fan of existential horror you know there you go yeah 
No, I got, uh, I already had, I have no bother and I must scream, but yeah, I got uh, Abe's Odyssey, the Shadow Runs, and Trine, and uh, also I checked today, and Age of Wonders 3 was also added to the list, which means that I have that on GOG now too. Uh, the one other thing, GOG, whenever they have a sale, they like to do like the free game, and uh, which one was it? Full Throttle Remastered is, was free for a bit. So if it still is, you might want to go there. Let me check right quick. It nope, was. It's fine. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, I, I got a I got a notification for a free game after um it was, it was like Dungeon Commander or something like that. Dungeon yeah. Accountants, something or other. <laughs> don't, don't give them ideas. <laughs> <laughs> File your dungeon taxes this year. Dude, the- man, Dungeon Accountant Simulator will probably be up. I give it maybe a month. Anyway. <laughs> We get some progress uh, in Unity. Yes, uh, Unity has uh, a new update. This is for uh, 2018.3. And of course, every time we get one of these massive sets of updates, we do the old Control F Linux. And that revealed um, that you can now edit your games using Finally. Visual Studio Code, yes. a Microsoft product. Um, there, there, there's, there's a, there's a, there's a plugin for, uh, there's a plugin for that. <laughs> Um, I, I mean, I mean, I've I've heard that it's an okay text editor, but so so is Vi. Um, and the, I promise that the progressive light mapper that's currently available only in the Windows builds will eventually make it to Windows. And OS it 10. might be the Santa hat, uh, with a <laughs> oxygen and blood and stuff. But I I totally read that as cabbage collection control. <laughs> yeah. Oh oh, you know you know you know what you should you should put the wizard robes on top of the Santa hat. <laughs> for the chair position i'm gonna stab you with a bitcoin now <laughs> bring it cupcake All right. I, I i, yeah. I got dogecoin armor plus three yeah two mentions of linux and one is for visual studio code if i wasn't already halfway down you know bald avenue i i'd be pulling my hair out right now god damn it unity <laughs> Just, just give up and shave your head, man. Yeah, give dude. Up. Just, just let it go, man. Don't be that guy. I would totally be that guy if I like got like male pattern. I, fuck yeah. Yeah. No. I'll, 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 I'll just go Chrome Dome. Why not? You gotta, great. gotta even out the town, tan on my scalp though, because it's all, it's pastier somehow. It, it would be shortly after I finally grew tired of doing like some like horribly bad comb over. Yeah. I think I would rock now, that. <laughs> well, I, I mean, would, would you would you go for the goatee and just like rock the Heisenberg forever at more? Uh, I always said, man, like if my hair ever falls out and does that, yeah, fuck it, I'm just going to shave it. I'm like, fuck it, I don't care. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whatever. All right. Well, let, let, let's let's talk about more Linux game <laughs> development. This is from Bearded Giant Games, um, and they he has announced the uh, Linux first initiative. Uh, well, as as it turns out, Bearded Giant Games is like just the one bearded giant and so he just likes developing on linux and has decided that linux will be the first class citizen and windows and os 10 ports will come later what does does i mean we, we we've heard a, we've heard a couple other there was another indie dev that was doing this as well they're like oh yeah we're gonna release our game first on linux and it's all well and good and it, it's nice to see that someone's stepping up and doing that but Unless you're developing exclusively on Godot or like writing your own engine, it's a fairly hard ask because like Unity and UE4 builds of the development environment aren't feature complete. Like you can't even use the freaking asset store for a uh, Unreal Engine. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of larger studios are still heavily leaning on DirectX for graphics input and sound. So it, it, it's 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 nice that someone's trying to create some traction, but we Lin, Lin, Linux as a whole has sort of failed to capture that game development market. And I think that that is the thing we we've been saying this forever. That is the thing that will actually bring the games to the Linuxes. It's I'm all for devs getting more money. We've already mentioned this in the Steam segment, but yeah, no, that's not uh, what they're doing. Is great supporting Linux is great. Treating Linux like a first class citizen, it's awesome. That's better than what anyone else is doing. Uh, but it's. Yeah, you'll be hard pressed to see me uh, actually go anywhere besides Steam or maybe GOG if you know the waxing gibbous is a particular shade of orange that time of month. Thank you, HP Lovecraft. Yes, <laughs> and <laughs> uh, like me, there are many people who just can't be asked to go around each and every single developer's website to look for their games so they can buy them. Hell, console players. 
they get their games from the one online digital store. It's the platform holders. So this I, I, really I, 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 won't be very effective in the short run, I feel like. I, I think I think consoles are poor choice because the physical market still exists and it is significant, mm-hmm. especially in, in the console space, definitely. Um, yes. even, even, even though like literally when you buy your PlayStation 4 games, I've, I've done this twice. You pop it in and then you da- got to download about 15 gigs of updates because, mm-hmm. you know, well, that's what I, the word on this. I, I honestly like I, I know this is going to irritate some people, but there I uh, almost 100 percent the fifth gen, the Xbox, whatever the fuck they want to call it, and the PS5 they will be discless variants of those consoles guaranteed 100%. makes sense or, yeah <laughs> uh, like a, or uh, optical discless that just like mm-hmm. need like a flash drive or an ssd or something to store the stuff well it yeah well here's the, you bring up a really good point though because there's motherfuckers that need the physical stuff they, they need it they need it hard and a lot of titles that you can buy you're just going to get a box with a redeemable code in it anyway you're not even going to get a disc mm-hmm yeah, for consoles, you still get discs, but yeah, it's completely useless the moment you pop it in. Like Jordan mentioned, you mm-hmm. you gotta download the updates, which is basically the full game anyway. So, meh. <laughs> I don't know. That's meh. The... yeah, that it's just uh, splitting up the game sales at this point. I'm not entirely sure for a teeny tiny little developer that that's gonna be a very good idea. Just well, saying. <laughs> I don't know. Pulling it from Steam, I think, you know, doing it the, hey, man, I'm going to get a better cut if I do it myself and I deal with that, which is 100% fine. Feral does yes. that. And I'm like, yo, just buy it directly from us, fam, and that'll be a thing. Or you can just get it from Steam or however. Uh, making that option, just going all out. Mm, cool story, bro. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Ah. So, let's talk about a um, 2D mission-based space shooter based on the Battle for the Solar System space opera novel trilogy. And this is, uh, well, it's the Battle for the Solar System, the Pandoran War. And it is a 2D shooter very similar to what you'd have, like, in olden games, like your asteroids and your, uh, what was the other one? Very similar? Damn it. I had. It I, want to say I, want, I want. I want to say defender, but I don't think that's right. It's yeah. It's very close to that. But yeah, no. It's uh. It's asteroids, but my with man, a story. My man, I know you're creeping. You look and you're like, hey man, who linked my uh, GitHub page, dude? You got to work mm-hmm. on labeling these screenshots. All right. I'm, I'm just gonna throw that out there. I, I'm not getting a whole lot of information from v not point six dash not six dot p. I'm gonna take. I, a look I gotta at click it. on it. It's from 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 three years ago. But yeah, like um, it and it compiles easily enough. It doesn't actually have too many dependencies. And yeah, like Pedro said, the gameplay is basically just asteroids, but with other people shooting back at you. And that, apparently, there's a story. There, there are missions. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's it, it's thing. It's available on GitHub. It's open source, so we got to give that a plug. Yeah, wanted to give it a mention. Um, I mean, it's being updated. And one thing I really wanted to throw some love towards is all of the sound assets are from freesound.org. Nice, yeah. Which, nice. And it's all accredited, like right there on the GitHub page. That's something you don't normally see. So, credit, good credit where you. credit is due. Indeed. Very good. 100%. <laughs> all right. Uh, hey, it's like that version of the game on Steam, except it doesn't crash. Yes. Well, well, well th- th- this, this is the example of like a community supported shooter that actually works. Mm-hmm. And it has worked for many years. <laughs> all right. Uh, they get a couple of new things. So this is basically aliens versus humans. You play as little fucking aliens running around blow, boom, boom, boom. It's fun. I remember when years ago, this thing was a motherfucker. I I had to make a how to video on how to get this (laughs) game compiled and running. How times have changed. It now includes a launcher, which is good. And they got some new stuff with uh, player movement, damage indicators, turrets, and you know, Hey, Spiker improvements. Who hasn't been waiting on that? But along with the gameplay changes, man, there's a cleanup with the code, and they've done a lot of uh, back-end work on just uh, giggity asset management to keep things smoother going forward. This project uh, keeps on rocking on. I do want to give everyone a fair warning. The Unvanquished Area 51, just Unvanquished in general, is still very active, but it is active with the people who only play this game. 
you will yeah. get murderated. Yeah, not, not not so much a learning curve as a brick wall you slam into repeatedly until you get good. Mm -hmm. But and if you that, like that type that of challenge, I'm not trying to scare you. anyone away. I mean, if you know what you're walking yeah. into, mm -hmm. go for it. So, yeah, it's, it's it's like folks are playing open arena. Like they 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 discovered that the first person shooter was perfected with Quake Three, and they haven't moved past that at all. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, it's the launchers are good. Launchers mean that whenever I see that icon at the corner of my eye, I can just go, oh, hey, check it out. That's how I still have relics of Anorath up to date, <laughs> even though they killed it. So basically, I have the files up to date, the last version that they pushed out. Hey. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> well, you gotta, you gotta use those fingers to type, man. Eternia. Eternia. Yeah. Eternia. Uh, Eterna. Ed Eterna. 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 All right. Eterna. Eterna. Yes. Whatever. There are two T's. Uh, so, yeah, it's an advanced cross platform rhythm game designed for keyboard. And you can see there it's on GitHub. Uh, it uh, The build is passing on Linux C Lang and Linux GCC. That's all we care about. Suck it, Mac. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Something isn't working too well for Mac there. But yeah, it's a rhythm game. It's a rhythm game that you're supposed to play it uh, with a keyboard, but after watching several videos of people playing this uh, on YouTube, the keyboard is very clearly a secondary focus here. I've seen people play it with just about anything, and some of the songs that I saw some people play and get like 94, 95% easily, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, I don't. I don't have enough fingers. So yeah. many excuses, Pedro. So many excuses. Um, yeah, no, again. that dude's got masterful toe, toe control. I, I, Pe I just Pe Pedro's don't. on about I, 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 fingers. I'm, I'm, this dude's uh, down an arm. Yeah. So, so, so here, here's the thing. Um, this is this is a Step Mania clone. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it's basically DDR for people who don't like to go outside or like physically exert themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and actually the, the pulse audio application sync is actually called step mania again, they, uh, Ben, you, you mentioned that they, um, they provide Fedora compile instructions, but this is one of those situations where I've built enough stuff on this box that I didn't actually have to install anything, which is always nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it, it compiles. I don't, I don't know, man. I, I tried to play a little bit of this. I thought I got some frame perfect things, but apparently I Look was off. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, 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 this, this is a man who plays nothing but Step Mania, or yeah. <laughs> he, he has clearly eaten the correct amount of chicken wings. Ser seriously, like a, a, this, this is this is a commercial for Adderall, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And he goes like that for the full four minutes and 18 seconds. Like, what the shit, dude? <laughs> Man, I, I can't wait to see, like, all these guys have, like, super degenerative, de degenerative arthritis <laughs> in their later years. And they're just like... <sighs> oh, man. That's definitely a thing. Uh, however, I can definitely see, like, getting in that zone. Because I know we've all been there. Mm -hmm. Like, maybe not for four minutes. But you've definitely hit something like that in a game. Especially a pattern recognition game. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. Uh, but yeah, I could. Did, did you ever play DDR, Pedro? Did they invent that in Portugal? <laughs> there, there were like arcade type of situations that had DDR machines. Yes, I think I played it a whole of once. I just imagine like a <laughs> knockoff version is like DDR and pirates and <laughs> DD. See, <laughs> I, man, I don't know. Like, you know that, 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 what dance, dance, communista? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the C uh, as in yes, yes, S I. Never mind. <laughs> deep cuts, man. Deep cuts. That was the joke, okay? Deep cuts. It, was it, 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 was, it wasn't a very good one, Pedro. Coming up next, we take a look at an adventure game from Night School Studio about teenage drama, and we tell you why we love teenage drama. So much drama. This is a very relaxing chairquisition because we're going to be playing a very relaxing game. Uh, this chairquisition, for those of you who don't know, is where we take a game and we tell you if it works, how it performs, how it controls, and you know, how, 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 how graphical fidelity it is. And then we also tell you how we feel about it. If we had fun, we had a scale from one to four chairs. I can't do this anymore. No, I was um, just about to say, no one's going to notice because once I get done processing this tomorrow, it's all going to be at the same volume. 
Damn it, Ben. You gotta, you, gotta, you gotta ruin all my fun all the time. We're throwing chairs at Oxenfree. It's from Night School Studios. It's built on its own engine. What is it? Oxenfree is it's a supernatural unity. thriller. Is it? Un- it's gotta be Unity. You- it smells like Unity. Yes. Yes, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm just reading the thing off the off the show notes. Um, so whatever, it's the, the oxen free unity. It's 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 the oxen free <laughs> unity engine. Oxen for unity. Um, <laughs> oxen free is a supernatural thriller about a group of friends who un- unwittingly open a ghostly rift. You're you are Alex, and you've brought your new stepbrother Jonas to a porn hub. I mean, to an overnight island party gone horribly wrong. Um, yeah, uh, we. This game was either part of a humble bundle. It was also on sale for like two dollars on um, on GOG, which is where I got it. Um, but anyways, let's talk about how it runs on Ubuntu. Ben Stone. Hey, beautiful people, check this out. You want to know how it runs on eighteen oh four? The LTS that business running over here on a Ryzen seven seventeen hundred with a nine eighty. That's going on right now. Cost my own damn fault. This graphical juggernaut. Can, can it do the um, UHD? That's what I tested at 3840 by 2160. First, I should say it launches. No issues. Did it uh, full screen window? Couldn't get it to crash. Didn't have a problem. It's going to do 60. I mean, look at the damn thing. Come on. Come on. Even with a 980, no issues whatsoever. And again, you know, I tested in wooded mode. I tested in big picture. No problems. Unity. Progress. Uh, with the controls, I didn't test it with the Exclude controller, but I did hit the go button on the areola, the steamy controller. Again, nothing negative to report. Clean bill of health, solid four chairs. Yeah, uh, on Fedora 2864 bit, I was about to say 24, but that's that's years ago. It's very old distribution. Uh, with the i7 6700K and the GTX 1080 Ti. Uh, does it launch? Yes, yes, it does. Does it perform? It, it do. Um, I, I, I will say, though, um, that at least if you're using the GOG version, I don't know if the Steam version, I don't think the Steam version has this problem, but it doesn't remember your windowed mode settings, which is really annoying. Um, graphics wise, I mean, the art style reminds me a lot about a, a, a lot of like, a, there were a lot of uh, Canadian animated shows coming out in the early aughts coming out of Quebec and Vancouver, and this sort of matches that art style. So it's all right. Uh, control wise. Um, yeah, the I, I think I think Steam input fixes a lot of the problems here. If you're not yep. using uh, the Steam version, uh, the GOG version, uh, the DualShock had a bunch of mu- buttons that were mismatched. One of the trigger button, uh, it was it was the uh, right trigger. It was the uh, start button, and the conversation cues were all just spray and pray. I, I don't know. Uh, keyboard and mouse worked fine though, uh, so I'll give that three out of four. Yeah, and over here on Solus with the GTX 1080 and the Ryzen 5 uh, 1600, it uh, launched. I also tried it on the Steam box that's, that's also running Fedora 29 with the Ryzen 5 2400G with the uh, RX Vega 11. And yeah, no, it holds um, 60 even on the uh, the APU. And if you're wondering how you can get a FURPS counter on SteamOS slash big picture mode, uh, Gallium HUD, look it up. That's that's actually very useful. Uh, there, yeah, the graphics they're there. They 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 they're teeny tiny characters on screen at any given point. But uh, yeah. Controls, the Steam controller, the 8-bit do SNES Pro, and the DualShock 4 all worked out of the box. So, yeah, the clean bill of health here. Um, bonus soda for not having actual key prompts. Everything is just positional, so which button you press indicates which uh, action you or what line of dialogue you will say at that time. Uh, and the keyboard, even though you can't really remap it, it does have the uh, arrows bound to mirror WASD, so it's good. Four chairs for me. <laughs> All right, well, there you go. Get the Steam version. Uh, what about fun-wise, Ben? Did you enjoy teenage drama and point-and-click adventure? I know hey, you love man, that. I almost had as much fun as... Uh, no, not really. All right, I'm lying. Um, oh, I just want to preface this by saying, just reminding everyone at home that I genuinely hate children and choose your own adventure book games <laughs> disguised as video games. This, Oxen Free, when you boil it down, it's an adventure book game. That's what it is. I mean, listen, Night School Studio... They did a great job with it. They absolutely did. The game is very performant. It runs well. Controllers work, at least on Steam. No issues whatsoever. It looks really pretty. Um, I like the art style. And 
unlike something like, oh, I don't know, life is strange, the conversations in this, cringeworthy as they might be, because, hey, teenagers, uh, or 20-somethings writing dialogue for teenagers, it's very organic. I mean, it does come across as a legitimate conversation, that uh, believable, I guess I should say. However, you know, it quickly became apparent that um, I kind of give negative fucks about teenagers going to an island dealing with spoopy shit. I do. It's really just a thing. I lasted, I, I have 43, but I went back to try to play some more and it just didn't happen today. I got right up to the game. Um, there's a point, apparently about 43 minutes in, where the game forced me to make a stupid choice. It was like I had dumb choice A, dumb choice B. I'm not going to spoil it because this is one of those games you're going to play once. Um, I had to tap out like right there. As far as gaming, Pedro is going to elaborate on this and Pedro is going to elaborate on it a little closer to the microphone than he did in the first section. Um, the gaming element was really the radio. You got to tune that to for the narrative, for the story, see how that's going to go. Now, the other interactive points is walking that's a thing, and pressing a button to perform a singular action. So, you know, sorry, not sorry, because if you don't dig this type of game, and you know who you are, if you're like me, you don't like games like Gone Home, You're Drunk, Life is Strange, and like Oxen Free, it's not going to change your mind. It's just not. It's a perfectly well done game for the type of people who dig the shit out of this, and more power to you. I'm just not one of them. However, I do want to live in this game's world, because one of the teenagers, straight up, munched on a special brownie and less than three minutes later dude tapped out he sit down he's like shit it's kicking in i want me some of that but <laughs> far as i can say for fun and again i'm not blowing up the game i'm just the entire genre how about that that lessens the blow yeah would not you and just pass it on it's not going to make you like this uh if you don't like the entire yeah nope yeah, I I have a pretty low tolerance for teenage, teenage drama, and this game kind of made the unfortunate misstep of front-loading a lot of it, where you had this conversation about stuff that I really don't care about. That said, once you power through the introduction, uh, the drama bits are few and far between, and you get to determine how much of an asshole you are to your stepbrother. I was the biggest asshole. I, I, I picked the worst option for every single conversation, and I think that may have resulted in one of the kill characters killing themselves, but uh, we'll get to that later. Um... <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, however, I am a sucker for a good mystery, and Oxenfree has a decent one. There are little, there are lots of little scraps of information everywhere, and it's fun for me to try and put it together and figure out what's going on. It seems straightforward, but maybe maybe it isn't. I don't know. Is, is, is it aliens? Is it Cthulhu? Is it ghosts? We don't know. Um, and the, the gameplay elements are a little lacking, though. I mean, like, the, the, this is clearly, like, a descendant from, like, King's Quest sort of uh, text-parsing adventure games, that sort of thing. And... They, they try to spice it up with, like, there's the radio element, which basically boils down to making very broad sweeps with your mouse until you find the crackly static thing and then figuring out what the specific um, position on the dial is to advance the plot. And I really, really, really wish that you had a run button in this because you do have to kind of explore a little bit and the walking is just painfully slow. Oh, my God. Um the um all all in all i mean if you like fmv games or, or mysteries you might get something out of it um the the yeah like ven said the di the dialogue is like not fucking super cringy teenage drama written by 50 year olds who don't understand how teenagers talk and there, there's a certain lack of profanity which kind of removes the, the the genuine nature of the conversation for a given teenager um but I'm and I, I mean like here's the thing the the game does the stupid thing where like oh no there's clearly a killer in the woods let's go take a shower in in the woods mm -hmm. with with our forest <laughs> shower, um, but like it it's it's well done um I, I I might be tempted to go back and finish it just because I want I want to know what's happening it has a, it has a decent enough plot hook to uh, keep me invested I'll give it two chairs it's solid, yep. And I've mentioned this time and time again. In my opinion, games should be about mechanics. It's the one thing that sets video games apart from other art mediums. It's 
their mechanics. It's the interactivity. And right off the bat, Oxen Free is a bare skeleton of game mechanics, which they're there to qualify this as a video game and they really do not much of anything else. The meat here is in the story and the dialogue tro- the dialogue choices that you make as you go along. I can see why the first bit of the game wouldn't punish you for making one choice over another. Uh, and you do get a very genuine sense of what when those choices start to matter. It's right after this bit that you're looking at right now. Uh, it's the core mechanic is the dialogue and how your character decides uh, what your character decides to say or you decide to say, how uh, that impacts everything else around you, what the other characters say, what the other characters do, has Jordan figured out. Uh, uh, it's I've always had trouble, even when I was a teenager, I had trouble relating to teenagers in the real world, and I really couldn't muster the effort to care about these virtual ones. Now, I'm again, I'm with Ven and Jordan on this one, because the dialogue here isn't as terrible as Life is Strange, but it's, yeah, it's still teenage dialogue, accurate as it may be. Um, the, the protagonist... Here is also unlike uh, Life is Strange, not just a pair of pants for you to don. She, she's kind of an asshole. It, every single uh, choice that you get, she drops so much sarcasm, it's actually kind of insane. Uh, but I play video games for what they can show me, not for what they can tell me. And this is a game about telling. There's a whole lot of telling rather than showing in Oxenfree. Uh, I care much more about the supernatural and the weird stuff uh, than I do about teenage ones and zeros. So unfortunately, when the focus is on the teenagers, my interest is kind of lost. Two chairs. All right. So there you go. Um, it, if, if you're into this sort of game, it's, it's a good example of it. If you're not into this sort of game, it probably won't change your mind. Um, Coming up. Check it out, man. If this was more like Negasonic Teenage War, I don't know. When I think about being a teenager, it's billions of years ago. It, I never had any situations like that if alcohol was involved, man. There was no, <laughs> oh, let's sit around. It was like, whoa, let's go ride sharks. Um, <laughs> see, like, see, like, man, I didn't have friends as a teenager, so I didn't do any of this shit. Um, then, then, then again, it was like, there's a killer in the wood. Yes, let's go get him. Um, I don't know. That's the thing. It's a well done game. It's just not my jam. I want to see that uh, radio game mechanic being used in other games where the focus is less on the dialogue and more on the exploration, for instance. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. Coming up next, we have more silly questions about our chair based religion, and we talk about crowdfunding. Are you ready? Are you ready? No, nope. well, no. It's probably a good thing that you're not then, because it's the end, so that there wouldn't be much of a point for you being ready for anything now I that feel we're it over. Down. <laughs> I mean, come on, Pedro, you could work on that. You knew absolutely reflexively we were both going to say no. We even said it at the same damn time. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, as the case may be, if you are in fact ready and you want to let us know just how disappointed you are that the show is now over, go on over to LinuxGameCast.com. You hit the contact button, fill out the form. It's pretty easy. Just make sure to pick LGC Weekly from the little choosy box. That's all you need to do. And uh, yeah, there's not even a caption that you need to click on anymore. Go figure. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah, let us know uh, what we got wrong, what we got right, which was probably very little. But hey, Admiral JT this week had a little something to say. So, or something Give to Give me a ask. minute, I'm busy drawing dicks. Uh. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, 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 Ben's doing that. We, 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 got, we got a question for our favorite religion. I bought many yes. games before ditching Windows in favor of Linux that couldn't be played until now thanks to the Mage of Proton. Magic. I misread that. Does <laughs> buying DLCs for these games count as a heretic dodged, purchase? Dodge to fucking spit take right there, kids. <laughs> also, do heretic purchases roll over year to year like vacation days? I haven't made one in 10 years and I've been using Linux. Thanks for the shows. I'm glad I can support you guys. I'm looking forward to the merch run. Keep up the good work. So let's clarify this real quick. You get five. You get five, period. That's it. 
If you if you if you run out, then you're filthy dual booting heathen. You can just go use a Mac for all I care. Um, <laughs> and also, and here, here here's the thing about buying DLC. When when you go to the Steam page or you go to like the itch page or whatever, is there, is there a little penguin icon next to it? If not, it's air deck purchase. Okay, so what what happens when Steam starts putting penguins next to whitelisted Proton stuff? Well, at that point, Linux gaming has collapsed and it's just all going to be wine, so we've kind of lost anyways. There's no point. Still yeah. fight the good fight. <laughs> I mean, come on, five... There's so many loopholes. The biggest loophole is bundles. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, 100%. Bundles are a very good way to get uh, all those filthy heathenistic games. Yeah. I straight up bought a bundle, what, for the, uh, what was that it? No, that the uh, troll game, stealth troll game. Sticks. Oh. <laughs> Sticks. And, yeah, it's the whole reason I bought the bundle. It had Linux games. I was like, I wanted to try that. Uh, but I understand because a lot of it right now is, oh, I want to see if this works with Proton, because I've done that with like the 700 games I have. It's like, mm-hmm. does this work? <laughs> nope. Does this work? Nope. Mm, I don't know. Let's stick with it. Or you could be, you know, a filthy dual booting heathen and just be like, hey, man, I'm going to buy it anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It might get a little... I mean, we're not going to stop you from buying the games. It's just uh, if you if we find you... Uh, throwing you your opinion around about approval. Linux games. <laughs> no, 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 no. See, you've, you've given me a brilliant idea. It's a browser extension where if you try to buy a Windows game, you get a picture of Pedro that goes <laughs> <laughs> and after you've broken your monitor and replaced it, you can yeah, then, then, then you can't play the game anyways because you just punched a hole through your monitor. <laughs> I'm just saying, man, if you're going to be buying uh, Windows games, uh, just just don't go online and say no tucks, no bucks. Mm-hmm. Don't okay. be that guy. Don't. 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 All right. Don't coming up next. Verita Nuda, the naked truth himself. So, uh, yeah, we've talked about Fig several times, and he says, Hey, guys, I know you're not a big fan of crowdfunded games, but sometimes they're worth it. Uh, I hear is what I think might be worth some attention. Uh, it is called Heroes of Death Trap Dungeon, and if you have ever played the old fighting fantasy game books back in the day, you know precisely the sort of world it inhabits. It is on fake, which is what Obsidian used to help fund Pillars of Eternity 2. God knows uh, what is going to happen to them now that they've been bought by Microsoft, but I fear nothing good. Anyway, consider looking at it, if you, uh, and if you feel it is worth a mention, it is two-thirds of the way there, and it and has 14 days left to run. Yeah, so there's Does it have issue. a Linux demo? Yeah, because <laughs> that's our biggest point of contention with um, crowdfunded oh. games. It's like, does it have a Linux demo? Well, so, so point, 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 other point of contention. Look at that supported platforms list. You got Steam, Mac, and Windows. I don't see a penguin there. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so it's we need something to come out of Fig for Linux that isn't you know that so, Fortnite ripoff or or Pillars of Eternity too, which is available on Linux. Yeah, no, Pillars of Eternity two is good. Good on Obsidian. I too am. Um, apprehensive to know what the hell they're going to do not that they're owned by microsoft but here's the thing i mean with me there are people who are linux curious i mean they they have a linux box and to them they're like hey i can back it because i'm gonna get my windows copy to us it is 100 percent. if this shit doesn't run under wine uh i'm not gonna go out and drop 120 wet stinky caches on a fucking license mm-hmm. to play it video game also it's fig i thought all right, i don't think any of us have been a huge fan of fig we're all willing to give him a chance yes i think right up to the point crazy justice rolled out and oh yes it's like that steaming pile of nope it's like really you let them release that in that state and we've they've went radio silent for months now mm-hmm. i don't know man Oh, I, 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 don't, I don't I don't know the, the the other thing too about fig is that like based on the 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 breakdown that uh, they did for pillars of eternity if you're trying if you're hoping to get any money back from fig you're smoking crack yeah it's not gonna happen <laughs> no <laughs> come on 
So, so it basically boils to this is another Kickstarter slash Indiegogo thing targeted specifically at games. So mm. it is. Yeah. It what, is what, what was it the is. Uh, what was the uh, the cutout? A hundred thousand. If you are going to see anybody back from it, or no, yeah. it was a hundred thousand for that specific game for the uh, people who donated at an investor level to break even, basically. So yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> Just remember that uh, we now play our first battle royale game in Linux. Uh, Counter Strike. Yes. <laughs> Let that sink in because Valve you know on that bombshell. We get a cue the music and get the fuck up out of here, people. If you want to get a hold of me, at Vin Stone on Twitter. Um, I'm at Old Man Vin, I think, on Mastodon, which works. It's a thing, man. It's the new hotness. I'm I'm Jordan Swung. You can find me whispering in people's ears and mistaking words for other words at the Burning Fool on Twitter. Plus Jordan Swung on Google Plus until April, until there's another data leak. And at Frojo at MassDollNextGameCast.com. And you won't be able to find me online uh, for the coming weeks very much. But hey, you can always drop me a line on Twitter at Linux uh, at not at Linux Gamecast. That's that's fine. Um, that at uh, at accounted for that's f-o-u-r that's probably the place i'm most likely to see your thing or if you show up on google plus that's plus bit of those but it's dying so just let it die remember that's what, I'm uh, doing. what we learned just immediately <laughs> before we get out of here and roll the credits is pedro in fact wants to see your thing so i believe it is your response nay duty <laughs> to oblige send him photos I'm of your thing i'm I'm still waiting for photos of Strider's thing. <laughs> he owes us some pictures of things. You what a sort of things, Pedro? To keep a promise. <laughs> you, know, you gotta be more specific there. Don't don't leave him any weasel room. Tell him what tell him what he owes us. <laughs> oh, he knows. He knows. What about the rest of the audience, Pedro? <laughs> Secrets aren't good. <laughs> They're it's not, not healthy. a secret. It's been all over Discord. <laughs> I well, I haven't seen it all over Discord. I don't even know what it is anymore, Pedro. <laughs> to be fair, neither do I. I just know that he owes us something. <laughs> he probably owes us one covering for your ass because apparently internet doesn't work in Portugal. Oh, it works. It's just that my time is going to be non-existent. He's going to be real busy. I mean, I mean, I mean, because Portugal is a black hole, right? So, like, time yep. will cease to exist. The I'm going gets the, to be to the event horizon. busy tiptoeing around the fact that my parents aren't technically, you know, married anymore and having to appease both sides of the family and basically having to do that for Nori's parents, too. So. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. oh, shit. Real talk, man. Family <laughs> drama. That, that's what Linux Gamecast needs. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, man, you brought, brought it up. What it really <laughs> sounded like to me is that Pedro needs a distraction. I just so want to know what Strider's thing one. is. <laughs> That's the only thing I've been harping on. Dying to fire, beautiful people. I apologize. <laughs> you wanted bye -bye. to know. Hail Santa. Five dudes.